in our normal time. And uh, when we heard that uh, Tony and Bev were going to be able to be with us, we thought it would be really, really nice to be able to just hear from them, have them share their heart a little bit. And, uh, um, you know, as we took the amount of time we did uh, ministering individually to people, Papa Tony said, uh, well, you know, there's, you know, it's getting late and I, I don't, I don't need to share. And I asked him to share yesterday and he said, well, I got to come up with something. And uh, so he did, but uh, he was willing to bow out now. And I thought, you know, I, I know we love these guys, don't we? And uh, so can we just give them the next 10, 15 minutes or whatever they want to take, whatever they want to share? And I told him, I said, well, if nothing else, just come up here and tell us how much you love us and blow kisses at us. I mean, we're, we're up for that too, right? So... Papa Tony, come on up. Let's just let's stand. Let's just give a warm welcome and and uh, just just receive uh, our friend and uh, the Lord's servant, Papa Tony. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> the thing that I like to share with, with the saints today is this: we need to fall in love with Christ. We need to understand the Holy Spirit that you and I carry the anointing one inside of us. Think about that. And so I feel like for the, the, uh, the church that I go to, I see things, I discern things, and sometimes I feel like the church is losing the excitement or, or the desire to be hungry for Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We need to go back to our first love to feel that hunger, to feel that hunger. I want more of you, Jesus. I want more of the Holy Spirit. We need that. Sometimes we try to do things with our own physical strength, and we think sometimes in our mind that we can do it. Listen, I'm 77 years old. I realize I cannot do it. And I'm trying to encourage young people to fall in love with Jesus again. And I'm talking about a true relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Not, not just talk about it, but I want to see the action of what you just share. With, with. When I meet people, they say, well, I believe in God. Now, I'll be honest with you. I can be a little rough of the edges. I admit that. But when somebody says to me, well, I believe in God, I say, so what? The devil believes in the Lord too. It is that relationship. I cannot focus enough of that relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ, then Jesus said it's better for me to go back to the Father so that the Father will send the, the comfort, the teacher. And we need to get back to that place. Amen. I know there's a lot of great churches, and I've seen, I've been involved, and, you know, people jump and yell, and, and you know, I'm, I'm all for that. I have no problems with that. But if that's all there is in the church, we are missing the simplicity of the love of Jesus and who the Holy Spirit is in our lives. And I always challenge the fathers, you, start, you have to start praying with your sons and daughters. They need to see daddy praise and worship. They need to see mom and dad together and worship the Lord at home. Take a few verses and teach them. Ask them what this means. Because it is our responsibility, saints. It is our responsibility to get that fellowship, to get that love again back to the Father. He's crying out for his children. Listen, we are sons and daughters. We are. But he wants us to give everything to him. And he wants is, is our heart. And if there's anything that will stir up in the body of Christ today, is let's go back 
to the love of Jesus. I've been in the body of Christ for, uh, you see, I was 35 when I got born again. I was a good Catholic boy. I knew of Jesus, but I never knew the relationship between me and him. It was always by works. You stand up, you kneel down, you take communion, you do this, you do that, you're fine. Say three Hail Marys and two Our Fathers, you're fine. Listen, it's all right when you have a religious mind, but when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this have to, something has to change. Do we talk? Do we live? Do we show the example of Jesus Christ to our neighborhood? I got a man that cuts my grass, a little lawn that I have now with a new place we're in. First time I met him, I love I, mean, I love to be challenged like this. He goes, Mr. Vigendis, I love to sin. That's expression. I said to myself, <laughs> oh Lord, I like this. He's a sinner. He talks like a sinner. Now we are born again believers. And I said to him, I'm not going to mention names. You'll know him, but I don't want to mention his names. I said to him, but you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He goes, ah, oh, you believe in this? Oh, I believe it. I live it. I said, Jesus died for me, for you. I'm just a sinner. That's why he came for the sinners. See, we need to be challenged with people like that. We run away from them. I don't. I love it. Because they, I, every time he comes, he cuts the grass. I'm reading my Bible. I don't know when he comes. I'm reading my Bible. And he goes, oh, you're, you're reading that book? I says, oh, I love that book. This gives me life. This encouraged me. Little by little. Little by little. I can see getting soft. I'm, I pray for salvation. But people have to see we love one another. And the Bible says in John that they will know that you are truly my disciples. Now, what I, I'm disturbed sometimes what I see is people, saints, leave one church, go to the next, and they tear down the one that just left. Should not be. We are the body of believers. There's no man, there's no natural church that can save you. Only Jesus Christ. If anything I can put inside of you, minister to you today, is let's get back for the love with Jesus Christ. Let's understand who the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Let's fall in love with him. Let's praise him. Give him thanks every day that when you get up in the morning. Thank you, Father, for the blessings. Thank you, Father, that you give me the opportunity to smell the air, to see the, your creation. One thing I, I'm enjoying so much where I live now is I have a three-season room, and we went there June 1st, and I used to say, and just read the Bible, just be quiet with the Lord. Just be quiet with him in his presence. And all of a sudden, birds start singing. Different type of birds start singing. And all of a sudden, I felt that voice in me. Even nature praises me. And it sounds like a symphony. It, in my ears, that's what it sounds like. I didn't know music, but it, it sounded like music. So I did. I stood up. I said, Father, thank you. To give, to give me this opportunity to enjoy the beauty that you created. We got to see the beauty in everything, in every situation, every part of our lives that we got involved with. And the best time to worship is when you go through trials to relation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We don't like to go through that. But it, it comes. How are we going to handle that? Are we going to walk away? Or are we going to start to lift our hands to the Father? Saints, let's fall in love with Jesus. Let's fall in love with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is revealing things what the Father wants you and I to do. Be sensitive to this voice. Recognize his voice. And how you know it's his voice? Read the word. 
you will know who's speaking to you. The Bible says in John 10, 10, I come to give you life. The devil is the father of lies. There's no truth in him. Today, you cannot touch or talk about sin no more in the church. People get offended. You remember John chapter 6 where the Lord started revealing about his body and his blood? Remember that scripture when he says, eat my flesh, drink my blood? He was talking about his death and his resurrection. Didn't understand it. Everybody left him. The same people that saw him feed four or 5,000 people left him. Then he looked at his 12 and he said, are you going to leave me too? Did I offend you? Because he was ready to say, if you're going to leave me, I can get one more like you. But saints, we live in the days that you got to know who you are in Christ. you got to know your authority in Christ. you got to know who you are. Because when the wind blows, you got to be ready for it. You never give up. You stand firm. I was born at age 35. The Lord allowed my wife and I to step to the first church at 40. Five years in the body of Christ. I, told, I, I, I thought the prophets and the apostles missed God. The first time I heard these words over my wife and I. Yeah. I said, they must be drunk. Don't they know I'm a Catholic boy? I can't, get, uh, I can't be a priesthood? I still had that philosophy. It's just through his grace that I've done what I've done because of him. I don't take no credit because I have nothing to give except the love of Jesus. Except the Holy Spirit. Be a voice for your neighbors. Be a voice for your town. So what do you call them here? Town. P. Lately I've been praying like this. The Bible says to pray for our president, right? The Bible says to pray for our leaders. So I'm catching myself saying, Father, I pray for our president right now that you protect him and guide him, keep him safe and sound, his kids, his wife, his sons. I pray for our vice president, Father, because I know he's, he loves you, he's a Christian. Father, I also I pray for the speaker of the house. First time that came out of my mouth, I says, what? Pray for the lost. I don't know who she is, but I tell you something, saints. If there's anything that can live in you today, let's go back to the love of Christ and the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit, the sweetness of the Holy Spirit, speak to you. Speak to you. And many Christians, but how do I know his voice? Listen, when you do study, when you read the word, the word speaks who Jesus is. The Holy Spirit will speak what Jesus wants you to know. And he's never going to speak things that it's a lie. The Bible says you are the image of God. Is that what the Bible says? The Bible says, says in Psalm 139 that you are created in the mother's womb. I knew you before you were there. Jeremiah chapter 1, he says, I knew you. I called you to be a prophet for the nation. There's so many. In Psalm 127, it says that children are inherited from, from the Lord. They're blessings to us, not curses. But it all has to do with what you and I as parents are going to put inside of our little ones. So I challenge you today. Let's fall in love with Jesus again. Can you stand up for a minute, please? I think I've emptied enough. No one to open and no one to close. All of us, raise your hands to the Lord. All of us, please. You know what that means? You're surrendered to the Father. You're surrendered. Stop praying the Spirit for a few minutes. Come on, saints. Just pray in the Spirit. Come on.
Come on, who's shakara kultura bakata? Stir that spirit, stir that gift inside of you. Come on. Father, touch your sons and daughters. Father, touch them in a mighty, mighty way, Father. If anyone here is confused, if anyone here is backslidden, Father, let them call upon you again, Father. If anyone needs to be saved here, Lord, let them have the salvation message. Let someone go to th that person and minister Christ. Father, I release that fresh anointing upon each one of us here. I speak life into this house. I speak life abundantly. Health, prosperity, in the name of Jesus. Let us fall in love with you again. Let us fall in love with you again, Father. Hug yourself. When you hug yourself, you're hugging the Holy Spirit. Come on. Tell me, you're the Holy Spirit, you're awesome. Come on, saints. Oh, so called, Release the Lord, just release a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit, a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit, a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit, a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, Tony, we've, uh, and Bev, and many of us, we've, we've, we've preached on every topic under the sun. We've preached all over the world to different groups. But what he just shared with us is, is the center of it all, isn't it? <laughs> Are you, am I, falling more deeply in love with Jesus every day? That is the center of it. That's the, that's the bullseye of the work of God in each of our lives. Amen. Let's just thank the Lord for being faithful to us to, to aim us right at the center. Lord, we're so thankful that over and over and over again, all these other things are important, but they're not the center. Jesus, you're the center. And falling in love with you is the reason for all of this. So Lord, fresh today, just go ahead and just tell the Lord, fresh today, I surrender to you, to surrender to your love. For me and your love coming out of me to somebody else, I surrender to your love fresh today, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. It's in your name we give thanks. It's in your name because of your name, the power of your name, that we're even part of this wonderful kingdom, the kingdom of God. Just go ahead and put your hand on the shoulder of someone around you and just say, I bless you in the name of the Lord. <laughs>